The following organizations have provided funding for this Into the Outdoors television series. Hi everyone, I've got a question for you. What's the most versatile, tasty, healthy food that almost everybody loves in one form or another? The answer, the potato. Today we're gonna learn all about these splendidly scrumptious buds as we head Into the Outdoors. I'm Ryan. And I'm Katie. And today we're going to learn all about these splendidly scrumptious spuds. She means potatoes. Hey, Katie, what do you call a potato that's acting like another vegetable? Hmm, let me think. Um, I give up. An imitator. Get it? <laughs> Very funny. Have you ever looked at a potato and wondered how it got to your table or to the store? Well, there's a whole process these tasty tubers have to go through before making it onto your plate. It all starts with plant breeders who develop new types of potatoes. Then, farmers grow and harvest the crop. Once the potatoes are harvested, they're transported from the farm to the packing facility. And finally, retailers and restaurants bring the potatoes to you. Did you know that the potato is the second most consumed food in the United States? On average, we eat about 135 pounds of potatoes a year, which is about one potato per day. That's a lot of potatoes, huh? So what exactly does it take to supply an entire population of humans with this many potatoes per year? Let's go find out. Hey there, it's Cassidy. And here's a question from one of our viewers. Justin from Fort Atkinson writes, I just learned in school that there was a potato famine in Ireland that destroyed the entire crop of potatoes back in 1845. What was the cause? Well, here's your answer, Justin. The famine began quite mysteriously when peasant farmers noticed leaves on potato plants suddenly turning black. They thought it was caused by a mysterious fog that had wafted across the fields of Ireland. The cause was actually an airborne fungus called blight. Fungal spores were carried in the millions by cool breezes to other plants. A single infected potato plant could infect thousands more in just a few days. Because of the famine, it became important to study potatoes. Now, there are teams of researchers who are trying to find better ways to grow healthy potatoes. Quite a tater tale, huh? Here at the University of Wisconsin's Hancock Research Station, scientists are looking at new ways to help farmers grow healthy, environmentally friendly potatoes that we all love to eat. We're here with Russell Groves, who knows all about potatoes. Well, Russell, I've been doing a bit of my own research, and what I found out is that you're trying to research the type of pests that eat potato plants. Well, that's exactly right, Katie. But what we try to do is determine what the key insect pests are that are attacking potatoes. And in Wisconsin, those three pests probably include the Colorado potato beetle, the potato leafhopper, and a group of insects that we call colonizing aphids. The way we go about managing those pests is incorporating integrated pest management. And what I mean by that is integrating all the tools that we have available to control that insect and keep it from reaching damaging levels. We do that through using a combination of cultural practices, biological controls, or even the use of plant protectants. Cultural controls include such things as crop rotation. So don't grow your crop in the same place year after year. Move it or rotate it over distance. Biological control would be, again, the use of a biological organism or maybe another insect to target a damaging insect in the field. And plant protectants are just that, materials that in many cases we'll use to keep an insect pest 
from reaching a damaging level. So all together, if we integrate all of those tools, we do our best to try and grow a healthy crop. But aren't all potatoes grown in a healthy way? Well, that's our goal for sure. And part of what we see here in front of us today is an experiment or part of our research program to continue to do just that. So again, as I mentioned, some of the foliar protectants that we use may have some off-site or non-target effects. And what I mean by that is the materials that we apply might control an insect, that, a beneficial insect that we would like to keep around. So to avoid doing that and avoid spraying, what we're trying to research here and use is a drip irrigation system whereby we are delivering plant protectants through the drip irrigation system. And by doing this, we can deliver the materials exactly where it's needed. At the time when the insect pest has reached or exceeded that threshold, and never have these materials move in the environment. They'll stay in these drip tubes, they'll move right to the plants, and those plants will take these materials up and control only those key insect pests that we're attempting to target. Did you know that there are several different bugs that can destroy potato plants? They are leaf hoppers, flea beetles, and the Colorado potato beetle. Mostly, they destroy the delicate leaves that help bring the nutrients to the tubers below ground. So controlling these little pests is necessary to a good crop of potatoes. I guess everybody likes potatoes, even bugs. Well, we've learned about all the research that goes into keeping bugs under control. We're here with Jed Cahoon, who's going to tell us how to grow a healthy potato plant. Sure, Ryan. A lot more goes into growing potatoes than just good weather and good luck. It starts out with the wisdom and knowledge of the growers and their families that have been in this business for multiple generations and are stewards of that land. To that, we add new technologies and research to develop best management practices to control the insects, diseases, and weeds that you might find in potatoes, so that we're adding just the right amount of input without causing any environmental damage. So researchers are working with farmers to grow healthier potatoes? That's right, Ryan. The Healthy Grown Potato Program is based on years of input from researchers at the university, from the growers themselves, and from others that are interested in helping the environment. In that, we developed best management practices, such as integrated pest management to control these insects, diseases, and weeds in environmentally friendly ways and other ways that we can use just the right amount of inputs so that we're growing a tasty, healthy potato crop. Thanks, Jed. I learned a lot. Thanks, Ryan. If you'd like more information about potatoes, log on to intotheoutdoors.org. Coming up next, we're headed to the farm to find out how the noble potato is grown. Don't go away, there's more. Into the Outdoors! 